Hello friends. This is Muse Fanfictions. How are you all? So in this video, we will see the fourth part of what if Naruto had the Force bloodline. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time. Let's begin the story. Previously on Naruto. Force unleashed, right, Naruto sweat dropped at the statement. Time to let Q-chan out to play. Cage Bushin no Jutsu, Kayubi no Yoko, Shadow Clone Technique, Nine-Tailed Demon Fox. Naruto shouted as he channeled Kayubi's Yuki into the cross-shaped hand seal and felt a strange suction occurring from his stomach area. After a bright crimson flash occurred, Naruto and Kashina saw the naked human form of Kayubi crouching on the wooden floor. Kayubi stood up and stretched her newly acquired muscles before she sensed two pairs of eyes on her and slowly turned around to see Naruto and Kashina staring at her, she waved at them. Yo! Kayubi-chan! Kashina shouted as she embraced the female demon, who hugged her back in response. I missed you. I missed you too Kashina-chan. I'm so sorry for not being able to counter the genjutsu placed on me, Kayubi said sadly. It wasn't your fault. I will never blame you for what happened that night. Kashina assured Kayubi, who perked up in response. Kashina then handed Kayubi some clothes that Naruto had originally bought for her to wear but Kayubi was able to wear them since they had about the same build. Naruto smiled slightly at the reunion between the two beautiful red-haired ladies, he suddenly remembered about the cage bushin he had sent out to buy lunch. He sealessly formed a cage bushin and was pleasantly surprised that he did not feel a dip in his yuki reserves at all before he dismissed it immediately, he finally realized that both ladies were looking at him puzzled. Oh I had that clone dispersed to inform the cage bushin I sent out earlier to buy extra since Q chan is now outside the seal. Naruto explained. Ah how thoughtful of you Naru kun Kayubi cooed as she draped herself on the wolf demon and used hand to pet one of his tail causing Kashina to suddenly appear beside him and grab a tail of her own and start stroking it. It's so soft and fluffy. Kashina rubbed her face against the soft silver fur of his tail, Naruto smiled gently as he let them play with his tails. Hey Kashina-chan. Kayubi had a mischievous gleam in her eye but Kashina didn't catch it. Yes Kayubi-chan? Kashina looked at the fox demoness curiously. Now that Naru Koi is a demon, he technically isn't your son anymore that means you can pursue a relationship with him now. Kayubi replied before smirking. And have him fuck both our brains out on a daily basis. Kashina and Naruto both blushed at what she said, mostly due to the second sentence. Kashina was slightly sad that Naruto was no longer considered her son but found herself happy that she could pursue a relationship with him without any problems. Naruto was busy trying to prevent a nosebleed from occurring due to his newfound demonic side urging him to bed both redheads by sending images of them naked directly into his mind. Kyuheim. Don't I have to train again since being a demon probably came with new powers? Naruto asked once he had gotten control of his demonic urges. I'm glad you brought that up, not only you but Kashina and I have to start training as well, and that psy kid you picked up. Kayubi unlatched herself from his tail, prompting Kashina to do the same but reluctantly. Kashina Chan should get her Taijutsu and Kenjutsu skills back up to her previous level, speaking of Kenjutsu, where is that katana of your Kashina Chan? Kayubi asked her fellow redhead. Right here. Kashina bit her left thumb this time and swiped it across the back of her right hand and a beautiful katana with an ocean blue blade popped out of the seal on her hand. This is the katana that I forged myself for my time as an Anbu captain. Say hello to Uzahime, Whirlpool Princess. Very beautiful katana Kashina-chan. I noticed that you applied seals along the blade and can't help but wonder what they are for. Naruto examined the blade. Well I placed a durability seal, which makes the blade extremely hard to break or shatter even when it comes into contact with something much harder than it is. The next is a weight seal. I activate it during my Kenjutsu training sessions so as to increase my speed. The final seal is something of my own design. I call it the Chakra Circulatory Seal. It basically circulates my water affinity chakra around the edges of the blade, like a chainsaw. This increases the cutting effect and sharpness of the blade. Kashina pointed out each seal as she explained their purpose. As I was saying, Kayubi coughed politely. 
Kashina Chan has to get her Taijutsu and Kenjutsu back into shape. You have to learn how to wield your new demonic abilities, which I will be teaching you about while I have to start regaining my Yuki reserves. We will begin later. My shadow clone just arrived back with the food and dispersed to let me know so let's eat first. Naruto led the way out of the room before creating another shadow clone to call Sai down from the roof. Naruto then retracted his demonic features and they sat down at the table as Sai walked through the door. To San who's this? Sai looked at Kayubi curiously. This is my mate Kayubi. Naruto answered simply. I thought families only had one father and one mother. Sai looked at him now in confusion. Well, I'm an exception. You will understand it when you're older. Naruto gestured for him to sit down and start eating. After they were done, Naruto created several cage bushes to clean up the mess while he led everyone outside into a clearing that could double as a training area. Okay before we began, we have to tell you something Sai. Naruto turned to the pale-skinned boy. What is it to San? Sai asked. You know Q-chan here is a demon right? Naruto asked. Hi, we were informed of your burden though it was never mentioned that Kayubi was female. I am curious to how she is outside the seal. Sai replied. Okay Q-chan is obviously female as you can see and I released her from the seal by becoming a full-fledged demon myself. I will explain the technicalities when you're older. For now I just want to know if this changes your opinion about us. Naruto observed the young boy as he slowly processed the information. I don't see why it should. Sai finally replied causing Naruto to smile. Good but this information stays between us, no outsiders should know about it. Naruto said seriously before handing Sai a scroll. Within that scroll is a set of weights for your arm and an ink brush and container. I want you to wear the weights on your arms to increase your drawing speed. Sai nodded in understanding as he sat down at one corner of the clearing and started his training. Naruto turned back to Kayubi and Kashina and gestured for Kayubi to begin. First I want you to create three reinforced cage bushes Naru-kun. They are to help Kashina-chan by engaging her in a three-on-one taijutsu spar. Naruto did so and Kashina followed the clones to another corner of the clearing. As for you, demons have three forms they can take. Currently we are in the human form. The other two forms would be the beast form and the Hanyu form, you were in the Hanyu form after your transformation. Alright, demons can change their forms into three different states got it, Naruto said. First I want you to turn into your beast form since I already know you can transform into your Hanyu form already, remember to suppress your Yuki. Don't want to scare Konoha into thinking a Jubi no Ukami, ten-tailed wolf, is about to attack them. Take note the amount of Yuki you release while transforming affects your beast form's size. Kayubi explained. Just imagine your beast form and you will start transforming immediately, remember your Yuki. Naruto suppressed his impressive supply of Yuki and imagined a silver furred wolf in his place. He felt his purple Yuki shifting inside his body and saw a snout pushing out of his mouth area. About 30 seconds later a horse-sized ten-tailed silver wolf was standing there. Naruto padded over to a puddle nearby and looked at his reflection. I know I said this already but being a demon is freaking awesome. Naruto exclaimed in his demonic voice as he back flipped on the spot. Impressive but you have to keep practicing since most demons, myself included, can go from form to form within a second. Kayubi demonstrated by jumping into the air and landing on all fours in her fox form. See? Hey give me a break I'm new at this. Naruto said before he spent another 30 seconds shifting back into his human form as Kayubi did it in one second again. Another thing is that you can control how bestial in appearance your Han Yu form can be. For example, the least would be just the pair of ears on your head and a single tail. The average setting, which most demons use as their default Han Yu form, would be the pair of ears on your head, the total number of tails you have, slitted pupils as well as fangs and claws. Kayubi demonstrated yet again by shifting into each setting she described, all the while Naruto was fighting his demonic urge to jump her. The most bestial form would have your entire form covered with fur but you remain upright, so in your case you would resemble a silver-colored ten-tailed werewolf. Okay I understand so far, what's next? Naruto asked eagerly. Well I guess I should explain about a biju's personal special ability. You see, when a demon acquires tailed beast status, they will gain a personal special ability and that ability will be passed on to their Jinchuriki. Kayubi explained as Naruto listened attentively. 
The list goes as along as this. Ichibi no Shukaku has total control over sand as well as an automated sand defense. Nibi no Bakaneko has total control over fire and the ability to use purple fire. Sanbi no Kyodai game has high water affinity and ability to breathe in water as well as a high intellect. Yanbi no Saru has the ability to use lava release as well as incredible reflexes. Gobi no Urukama has the ability to use steam release. Rokubi no Namakuji has the ability to use bubble release and its slime can be either acidic or have healing properties. Nanabi no Kabutomushi has total control over insects and the only biju that can fly. Hachibi no Kyogu has pure brute strength and multiple limbs, and finally me. Kayubi no Yoko has the ability to manipulate Mayuki as well as an intense regeneration. Wow those are some impressive abilities, so what is mine going to be? Naruto asked as he clenched and unclenched his fist, willing some sort of power to appear. That's the problem, we won't know until it activates, which could take anywhere from an hour to a century. Kayubi replied causing Naruto to sigh in disappointment. Cheer up Koishi. I have something else to teach you. Really? What is it? Naruto perked up visibly. This technique is known as an Amari, menacing ball. All bijus are able to use this technique and its strength relies on how many tails that biju has. For example, my version would be the Kayubiko Amari, nine-tailed menacing ball, and it has the potential to level three quarters of Konoha at full charge. Kayubi giggled at the star-struck look in her mate's eyes. Then with if I used ten tails, Naruto imagined him in his beast form charging a Jubiko Amari, ten-tailed menacing ball, and blowing up the entire Konoha, he chuckled darkly at the image causing Kayubi to sweat drop. You just imagined blowing up Konoha didn't you, Kayubi deadpanned. No, whatever gave you that idea? Naruto looked at her with an innocent expression. Right. Anyway to use the technique, you have to be in your beast form and start gathering positive black chakra and negative white chakra into a sphere and then compress it inside your mouth. The ratio has to be 8 to 2 respectively or the attack will backfire. However, your dad found a way to bypass the beast form and allows us to perform it in our Hanyu forms. Kayubi smirked slightly at Naruto, who seemed to be leaning in slightly. The jutsu he created, the Rasengan, spiraling sphere, was an imitation of an Amari. So all we have to do is gather the same ratio of black and white chakra into a Rasengan and we would be able to perform an Amari without going into our beast forms. And I say we because I have yet to achieve it as well. Do you still remember how to perform a Rasengan? Of course I do. Just because I hardly use it doesn't mean I forgot how to. Naruto replied with a pout as he held up his palm and a condensed sphere of spiraling chakra appeared in it. Very good. Now you know what to do right. Kayubi asked to make sure. Naruto nodded as he created 500 cage bushins and started practicing combining the Rasengan with the correct proportion of chakra. Kayubi did the same as well. Akatsuki's secret meeting place, now that everyone has assembled, it seems that Zetsu has something urgent to inform us off since he had asked me to gather all of you. Pain looked around the room to see nine other holographic figures standing on each fingertip of the statue in the room. So what does Zetsu-san want? Kukakuku. A snake-like man chuckled as he eyed the plant like man hungrily, Zetsu shivered slightly under his gaze. Sorry to drag you away from your important experiments Orochimaru-san but we seem to have encountered someone problematic leader-san. Zetsu spoke in his strange dual-toned voice. So the fucking plant asked us to fucking get together just because he met a fucking asshole? A figure with slicked back hair yelled. That's enough Hedan. Pain glared at him, effectively shutting him up. Go on and elaborate on what you mean by that Zetsu. He wears strange black armor with red trims and a crimson visor, he calls himself Darth Revan and he fucking took on the entire Konoha and walked away unscratched. He killed off Danzo and his entire root division and saved someone by the name of Uzumaki Kashina. The fucker toyed with Danzo and tortured him before killing him. Zetsu replied. Impossible. The only person who I believe could pull off such a feat would be Leader Sama. A hunchbacked figure spoke in a deep voice. While I appreciate your faith in my abilities Sasori, please allow Zetsu to finish his report. Pain said as Sasori gave a small nod of acceptance. He used attacks that were similar to yours Leader Sama, it would be easier if I showed you directly. 
Zetsu ran through a moderate amount of hand seals before announcing the technique's name. Memory Tue no Jutsu. Memory Projection Technique. As soon as the technique was announced, the scene of Darth Revan storming through Konohagakure started playing in the middle of the room as the members of Akatsuki watched silently. Itachi kept his look of surprise of his face at finding out what Naruto had done while Kisame had a shark-like grin on his face upon seeing the lightsabers. This is indeed troubling. Anyone has anything to add on this matter? Payne asked after the recording had finished. I have something that might interest you leader Sama. A figure that wore a bandana and face mask flipped through a book in his hands. Damn it you stupid Kakuzu. Stop looking for more of your fucking bounties. Hidan cursed at his partner. Shut up Hidan. Leader Sama. This is the most recent edition of the bingo book and, ah here it is. Kakuzu stopped at a page before reading it aloud. This is a recent edition from Kirigakure. Name. Darth Revan Age. Unknown Gender. Male Rank. S Rank. Keke Jenke. Unknown Type that allows him to perform incredible feats. Appearance. Unknown but is usually seen wearing black armor with red trim complete with helmet and a black cloak with hood. Weapons. Two cylindrical weapons that emit beams of light similar to the Nidame Hokage's Raijin. Ninjutsu. Unknown Genjutsu. Unknown Taijutsu. Unknown. Kenjutsu. Unknown, assumed Anbu level. Reason for listing. Defeated Sanbi no Yugura, the Yandaimi Mizukage and known Jinchuriki by himself and ended the bloodline purges in Mizu no Kuni. Assumed to be able to take on large armies easily. Reward. Nil. So he was the one who killed Madara's puppet, Payne thought as he observed the silent members, all of whom appeared to be waiting for some sort of order. This individual is too dangerous to be left to his own will, we have to either have him join our organization or eliminate him. Payne announced before looking over all the members. Itachi and Kisame. You two will approach him and extend an invitation to join Akatsuki. Under no circumstances are you to engage him if he refuses, come straight back to base after that. Do you understand? Hi Leader Sama. Itachi and Kisame replied before their holograms shimmered out of existence. The rest of you are dismissed until they return. Payne's hologram faded out as well, before the rest of the members followed suit. Omegakure no Sado, Hidden Rain Village. So apparently this Darth Revan character shows up out of nowhere and uses attacks similar to your gravity attacks. Madara asked Payne, who was sitting on the head of a stone gargoyle at the top of the tower in the rain. He is also the one who defeated your puppet and took on the entire ninja force of Konoha and walked away undamaged, Payne added in a monotone voice. I see, and what measures have you taken against him? Madara leaned against the wall facing Payne's back. I have dispatched Itachi and Kisame to offer him a spot in Akatsuki, Payne replied. Very good, and what should happen if he refused this invitation? Madara asked. Then we will hunt him down and kill him as he poses a threat to our plan for peace, Payne said simply as Madara nodded satisfied for the moment and disappeared in his usual way. Payne sensed another presence approaching from behind him and smiled slightly as he recognized it. Hello Conan. Nagato. How many times have I told you to stop sitting in the rain? Conan asked exasperated. As many times as I told you that I can't get sick anyway. Payne replied with a small chuckle. And how many times is that? Conan asked rhetorically. 176 times, Payne answered. You actually counted, Conan deadpanned before sighing. You know that I don't trust him. I know, but we are working towards the same goal, eternal peace. Payne raised his head and looked at the falling rain. And when peace comes, our village can finally stop crying. With Itachi and Kisame, so Itachi, since he was spotted near your ex-village, where do we look for him? Kisame asked as he hefted his large bandaged sword onto his shoulder. We will search the forest around Konoha first. It is likely he has a base outside of the village's walls since he took Kashina-san with him. Itachi replied in his usual emotionless manner. If that's what you think then I'm fine with it. Kisame shrugged as he followed after Itachi, who had started walking in the direction of Hai no Kuni. HN. Itachi grunted in reply. You need to get laid. Kisame deadpanned but Itachi ignored him. It seems Naruto-kun has been busy, he seemed to trust me with his identity for some reason. I could easily inform Pain or Hokage-sama about his true identity but, I'd rather see how this turns out. 
Itachi thought. Four hours later with Naruto Naruto wiped away the sweat that had formed on his brow as he tried and failed again to create an Amari by using the Rasengan, he took a breather and looked around the area. His shadow clones along with Kayubi and her shadow clones seemed to have as much luck as he did, Kashina was panting heavily and was thoroughly drenched in sweat after sparring for four hours straight. Sai could barely lift his arms anymore due to the fact that he had been painting continuously with weights on his wrists right from the start. Naruto frowned as he looked down at his two hands, he had been able to learn the Rasengan within a week without the help of shadow clones. So why was forming an Amari so hard even with the help of his clones? Naruto sighed dejectedly as he tried to gather the positive black chakra and negative white chakra in the correct ratio again. Kashina panted heavily as she dropped down onto one knee, too tired to keep on sparring and Naruto's clones noticed this so they backed off. Damn I am really out of shape if I am this tired just after 4 hours of continuous sparring, I used to be able to spar for 8 hours straight even without Kayubi chans help. Kashina thought bitterly as she wiped the sweat from her brow. Kashina held up her hands and signaled that she was done for the day. The clones nodded and dispersed themselves. She saw that Naruto noticed the clones dispersal and turned to her with a small smile and gestured for her to take a break, she gave him a grateful smile in response. All right everyone, that should be enough for today and we will resume training tomorrow afternoon. Kayubi announced causing everyone to sigh in relief. The clearing erupted in smoke as Kayubi and Naruto dispersed their shadow clones and absorbed their memories as Sai took off his weights. Everyone go and take a shower before meeting me in the dining room, I have something to discuss with you all. Naruto told them. Kashina grabbed an extra set of clothes and headed for the shower first, Naruto gave Sai the go-ahead to use the shower next before turning to Kayubi. Kyuheim. Why is forming an Amari using the Rasengan as a base so hard? Naruto asked the female fox demon. Koishi, the Amari was never meant to be used in this fashion so it will take a lot of time and effort to be able to accomplish it. Kayubi replied. I know but it's just so frustrating, Naruto sighed before Kayubi hugged him from behind. I know we will accomplish it eventually Koishi, just give it some time. Now how about after Sai is done we go take a bath together so I can help you relax. Kayubi whispered the last word huskily into his ear, sending a pleasant shiver up his spine. That's a great idea Kyuheim. I can't wait for you to help me relax. Naruto whispered back just as huskily as he twisted around in her grip and kissed her right on the lips. Kayubi wrapped her arms around his head as Naruto put his around her waist and pulled her closer as he deepened the kiss further. Naruto slipped his tongue into her mouth and dragged her tongue back into his mouth and sucked on it causing Kayubi to let out a soft moan. Naruto fell back onto the sofa and Kayubi landed on his chest as they continued their makeout session before a small cough interrupted them, the couple turned to find Kashina standing behind them with a blush on her face. I just came to inform you that Sai had just finished his bath. Kashina said. Oh thanks Kashina chan. Come on Naru kun. Kayubi dragged a half dazed Naruto into the bathroom and locked the door behind them, leaving a wide eyed Kashina to stare at the door. Small lime scene. Skip to next line of bold text if you don't want to read. The couple continued from where they had left off except this time their hands weren't idle and were running all over their lover's body as they kissed. Kayubi tugged the hem of Naruto's shirt signifying that she wanted it off so they separated long enough to discard their clothing and enter the shower. Naruto took the time to marvel at the naked body of Kayubi as she turned on the shower, his eyes followed the trails of water running down her body. Naru-kun you got so sweaty during training, let your Q-chan clean you up. Kayubi cooed as she rubbed the soap onto his back and chest with her smooth hands, this caused a certain part of his anatomy to stand at attention. Kayubi rubbed small circles on his chest teasingly as she pressed her impressive bust into his back before her hands moved lower. Unaru kun is this for me? Kayubi smirked as her hands grabbed his erect member and pumped it slowly causing him to let out a small groan. Kayubi slowly increased the speed of her pumping causing Naruto to groan louder and buck slightly into her hand. Come on baby, come for me. And Naruto complied, he released directly into Kayubi's waiting hand with a roar. He watched as Kayubi brought her cum coated hand to her mouth and lick at the cum of it slowly, the erotic sight caused him to immediately harden again. Em delicious, now you're dirty down there again. Don't worry. I will make sure it is nice and clean when I'm done with it. 
Kyubi licked her lips seductively as she crouched down in front of him. Just relax and let Q Chan handle everything. Kyubi sent a teasing lick from the base of his member all the way up to the head before repeating it another two times. Naruto groaned at the feeling of her tongue moving along his shaft. Kyubi drew back slightly and kissed the tip of his cock before smirking and taking the tip into her mouth. Ooh damn. Naruto groaned as he felt Kyubi's tongue swirling around the head of his member. Taking that as a good sign, Kyubi started bobbing her head up and down the length of his member slowly. Her hand wasn't idle as she fondled his balls, gently rolling them between her fingers causing Naruto to let out another groan. Q Chan I I don't think I can H hold it in, Naruto warned her in advance but she just used her hand to stimulate his balls further as she started bobbing her head faster. I I'm coming. Naruto shot spurt after spurt directly into Kyubi's mouth as she sucked him dry, she gulped it all down before licking her lips clean. Yum. Now you're all clean and I think I just found my new favorite drink. Kyubi squeezed his member gently as if to emphasize her point. That was fantastic Q chan Naruto kissed her directly on the lips, not caring that he tasted his own essence on her lips. Just remember it's your turn next time to pleasure me. Now let's finish up since you have something to talk to us about. Kyubi smirked. Lime scene ended, it's safe to come out now. They emerged from the bathroom to see the other two people sitting at the dining room table already. Sai was reading another book while Kashina had a huge blush on her face as she looked at the two. Sorry, Narukun was really dirty down there Sai helped him clean it properly. Kayubi purred. Sai merely nodded his head since he didn't understand any of those things yet, Kashina blushed because she had heard the moans and groans while Naruto blushed because of the images in his head. Okay. Naruto coughed slightly to gain everyone's attention as his blush receded. I called everyone together because I wanted to discuss my future plans. Plans? Kashina asked curiously as Sai kept the book he was reading and paid attention. Yes, as you all know I hold no love for Konoha especially after how they treat me. Naruto reminded them causing similar growls to emerge from both females' throats. So what are your plans Koishi? Kayubi asked since she herself didn't know. I plan to leave this village when the opportunity arises, Naruto said simply. To San where are we going to go? Sai asked, he had read that family is more important than everything else so he took that to heart. We are going to build a new village, or more like rebuilding an old one. I am going to bring Uzushiogakir back to its former glory. Naruto replied causing Kashina to gasp. That's going to take a lot of work Naruto-kun. Not to mention where you are going to get villagers from, Kashina reminded him. I've got that covered. Remember that I am a hero in Kiri. I will ask for volunteers to repopulate the village and Mei Chan should be able to draft a treaty between our villages. The only thing that I have yet to figure out will be the building materials but I am sure I will solve that problem in future. Naruto explained. So why did you want to discuss about this if you already had thought it out? Kashina asked in confusion. I wanted to know if you guys would go with me when I leave the village, I already know that Q Chan will. Naruto hugged the demoness beside him. The book said that family should be the top of your list so I will be coming too to San. Sai said as the three turned to look at Kashina. I I don't know, this is Minato Kun's village, he sacrificed his life for it, Kashina began causing Naruto to look down sadly. But after hearing what they had done, I can't stand to even set foot inside a village with such disgusting people inside. So I'm coming along as well. Kashina Chan. Naruto smiled slightly at her response. Just make sure you inform Miko Chan as well, all right? Kashina told him, to which he nodded in the affirmative. I plan on it. Naruto replied. How about we go out for dinner as a whole family for once? There's a town not too far from here. Naruto suggested. That sounds great, Naru kun. Kayubi said as Kashina and Sai both nodded their heads in agreement. Then it's settled. Naruto exclaimed before they all changed and left the house in the direction of the village Naruto had mentioned. They chatted about random things as they walked through the forest until Naruto sensed a familiar presence and told them to carry on as he caught up with an old friend. Naruto unsealed his armor from its seal and donned it before leaping off in the direction of the presence. Naruto walked through another part of the forest until he reached a small clearing, he suddenly flung three kanai in a random direction only to hear them impact against a tree trunk. Come out. I can already sense you. 
Uchiha Itachi. Naruto called out as two figures, one significantly larger than the other, came out from behind the tree. They both wore ankle-length black cloaks with red clouds imprinted on them. There were straw bamboo hats on their heads as well. They took off and discarded their hats, revealing the face of Uchiha Itachi and a tall blue-skinned shark-like man with shark-like teeth. Cool teeth. Naruto commented upon seeing the taller figure. Thanks. He flashed his teeth in a grin as he replied. Hoshigaki Kisame, the Kirigakir no Kaijin, monster of the hidden mist, at your service. Ah one of the Kiri no Shinobigatana Shichinen Shu, seven great ninja swordsmen of the mist. If I remember correctly you wield Samahata, shark skin, after you killed its original owner. Naruto recalled what Mei had told him. I am honored that you know of me and my sword, Kisame chuckled. Enough fooling around, Itachi interrupted their conversation with his usual monotone voice. You need to get laid man. Naruto deadpanned causing Itachi's eyebrow to twitch slightly and Kisame to roar with laughter. That's exactly what I told him, Kisame snickered. Regardless of my lack of a sexual life, ha! Huh? So you admit it? Naruto pointed out causing Kisame to burst into laughter again. Our leader has offered you an invitation to join Akatsuki, Itachi continued as if he hadn't heard them. Akatsuki? Naruto lifted an eyebrow in confusion. It is an organization that aims to collect the bijus from around the elemental nations and use them to achieve world peace. Itachi explained causing Naruto to suppress his rage immediately upon hearing that. And why did your leader extend this gracious invite to me? Naruto kept his voice as neutral as possible. He has seen your skill and is very impressed with the abilities you possess, so he requested us to find you and extend an invitation, Itachi replied. Can I have some time to think about it? Naruto inquired. That is acceptable. We will be waiting at the border of Hai no Kuni and Aim no Kuni, Land of Rain, in a week's time, give us your answer then, Itachi said before he and Kisame turned around and disappeared into the shadows of the forest. Naruto changed back out of his Darth Revan armor and resealed it before meeting back up with Kayubi, Kashina and Sai. The group decided to eat at a small dango shop. They sat down at a table and ordered their food. So who was it you had met up with? Kayubi asked once the waiter had left. Uchiha Itachi and Hoshigaki Kisame. Naruto replied causing Kashina to go widen her eyes slightly. What were those two S-class missing nins doing together? Kashina hissed lowly since they didn't want the other customers to overhear their conversation. Apparently their leader caught wind of my abilities as Darth Revan and extended an invitation to me to join their organization known as Akatsuki, Naruto explained. What is the goal of this Akatsuki? Kayubi asked. They plan to capture all the biju and use their power to create peace in the world, Naruto growled slightly. So what is your plan concerning this Akatsuki? Kashina inquired. They gave me a week to decide whether I would join or not, I get the feeling that no is not an option. Naruto sighed as he rubbed his temples. Why don't you milk them for more information when you meet them next and make your decision then? Kayubi suggested. Agreed but you guys won't be coming with me, I can't risk having them take one of you as a hostage. Naruto said, Sai accepted willingly but Kashina and Kayubi glared holes into his head. Kashina Chan. You still aren't back up to your previous standard in Kuheim, you still aren't back to full strength yet. Naruto told the two redheads, who sighed unhappily in unison but accepted his reasoning nonetheless. Good, now that the food is here let's eat. A week later Naruto stood at the edge of the border between Hai no Kuni and Aim no Kuni in his Darth Revan armor, eventually the two Akatsuki members emerged from the forest. So Revan san, have you reached a decision regarding our invitation yet? Itachi asked. Have you gotten laid yet? Naruto replied causing Kisame to snicker yet again and Itachi to sigh. I want to know more about this, Akatsuki before I sign up. What questions do you have? Itachi's gaze never left the armored figure. How many people are in this organization of yours? Naruto asked his first question. 10. Are all of them S-class ninjas? Yes. Do all of them have some form of special ability? Yes. Can you answer with anything longer than a single syllable? Maybe. Okay final question. How are you going to acquire all the biju and seal them? Naruto asked seriously. 
Leader Sama told us that our job is to capture the Jinshurikis of the Biju and bring them back to base where we will begin transferring the Biju into a gigantic ceiling statue there. Unfortunately the Jinshuriki will not survive the breaking of the seal so they will die once the extraction is done but Leader Sama says that sacrifices are necessary for peace to occur. Itachi explained. That's bullshit. Naruto spat causing Itachi and Kisame to raise their eyebrows in surprise. How is peace going to be obtained in such a manner? Your leader is a wacko and I personally won't follow a madman's orders. Is that your final decision? Itachi asked. Damn right it is. Naruto crossed his arms and glared at them defiantly through his visor. Then we will be leaving now. Itachi turned around and crossed the border. Too bad. I would have preferred you as my partner compared to Mr. Personality over there. Kisame sighed as he too crossed the border and walked after Itachi. Naruto waited until they were a bit away before smirking under his helmet and shouting after them. Tell Madara Teme that Darth Revan said hi. Stupid council and their stupid missions to go and try to seduce some stupid guy to join our village. Yugito ranted inside her head as she trekked in the direction of Hai no Kuni. Calm down kitten. Just kick the shit out of him and he will join the village. Nibi attempted to calm down her pissed Jinchuriki. I know Nibi Chan. It's just that I am so sick and tired of the council sending me on seduction missions. They treat Karabi Sensei like an idol but they just glare at me and decline me entrance to shops. Yugito thought bitterly. You know that I'm sorry for attacking your village right? Some masked man appeared out of thin air and looked at me with some strange red eye with black markings in them and the next thing I know I am getting sealed in you, Nibi replied sadly. I don't blame you Nibi Chan. I'm just not sure how much more of this treatment I can take, Yugito sighed. Not all of them are bad. How about A, Karabi and his Genin team? Nibi asked her container. Reikage Sama tries his best to make sure I have a good life, Karabi Sensei is great as well so are his Genin team, Yugito trailed off as she tried to think of other people that were nice to her. But that's it, besides Darui and C, I can't think of any others. Don't worry kitten I'm sure they will come around eventually. Nibi reassured the blonde haired Jinchuriki. Right, and the guy I'm chasing is going to be super hot, Yugito replied sarcastically before cutting off the mental link. With Naruto and company, Naruto sneezed suddenly causing the Amari he was forming to become unstable and implode, he felt his eyebrow twitching uncontrollably. It's been a week since they had started training and the encounter between Naruto and Akatsuki, the group hadn't heard from the organization since then. Naruto sighed as he began gathering black positive chakra and white negative chakra while trying to get them in the correct ratio and rotating them in every direction at the same time. He concentrated as the black and white chakra started gathering and he tried to get them in the right ratio as he started rotating them, the half-formed Amari just fell apart again. Damn it this is ridiculous. I can't gather the correct ratio while trying to create a Rasengan. It's like trying to look left and right at the same time. Wait a minute, looking left and right at the same time, that's it. Naruto's eyes widened in realization. You, come over here. Naruto called one of his shadow clones over. Okay, while I start gathering the black and white chakra in the correct ratio, I want you to start rotating them into a Rasengan. The clone caught on to his train of thought and started nodding its head vigorously. Naruto held his right palm up skywards and started gathering the black and white chakra into it. The clone started making random clawing motions in the air above the palm and slowly but surely the two different chakras started to merge and form into a perfect Rasengan. Yes I knew it. Now the only thing left is to test this bad boy out. Naruto dispelled the clone before taking aim at the sky since he didn't want to destroy everything in sight. He pulled his right arm back slightly. Jubiko Amari. Ten-tailed menacing ball. Naruto shouted as he punched his hand upward causing a huge purple beam of Yuki to blast out of his hand, similar to his Chikara no Taihao, force cannon. The huge purple beam blasted straight into the sky and right into the clouds before exploding in a massive dome of purple yuki that caused the clouds in that area to disappear completely. Naruto grinned in success as everyone else watched in jaw-dropping silence before Kayubi tackled Naruto from behind. I knew you could do it Naru-kun, so what was the secret? Kayubi asked with her kit fox eyes at full blast, Naruto just couldn't say no when she did that. I gathered the correct ratio of black positive chakra and white negative chakra into my palm while I had a cage bush and form a Rasengan with chakras. 
I just hoped nobody noticed that little light show. Naruto gazed at the hole in the clouds. Hokage Tower Hirazan sighed as he saw a huge purple beam blasting straight through the clouds and destroying them in a massive explosion, he just had to look out his window to take a break. That has Darth Revan written all over it, he thought as he turned away from the window and took out his Icha Icha book from its hiding place. Just read your porn and forget all about it Hirazan, just read and forget, he he he, Kiara you naughty girl. The Hokage's secretary was about to knock on his door when she heard perverted giggling coming from behind it, she sighed and turned away knowing what he was doing. With Yugito, did you just see that Nibi-chan? Yugito asked her feline demon. The huge purple beam that destroyed all the clouds in that area of the sky. Yes I saw it and I believe it has your target's name written all over it. Nibi chuckled as she saw her host pale slightly. How the hell am I supposed to fight someone who can do that? Yugito pointed at the spot where the beam originated from. I don't know kitten, it could actually be a hot guy and you can ride him until he. Nibi. Yugito shouted in her mind. With Orochimaru. What or who could create such a powerful attack? What or whoever it was, will be mine. Kukuku. Orochimaru thought to himself as he chuckled and creamed his pants at the thought of acquiring such a power. Sasori looked at his partner and was about to question him about his evil chuckling when he noticed the boner his partner was sporting. Sasori paled as much as a puppet was able to and took two discreet steps away from his creepy partner, who suddenly turned to look at him with a gleam in his eye. Sasori paled further as he glanced around for a distraction and found a young boy walking past him and quickly grabbed him and threw the boy at Orochimaru and ran as fast as possible in another direction. With Madara Madara fumed as he walked around Payne's tower in a megacure because for some reason he just could not find the blaster toilet in the building. He looked out a nearby window in the room and saw a huge purple beam decimate the clouds in the sky with a massive purple colored explosion causing him to shit in his pants. Payne chose that moment to walk into the room and immediately scrunch up his nose at the foul odor in the room, he took an experimental sniff and recoiled in disgust. Did someone just shit in this room? Payne asked as he held his nose. No, Madara said as he quickly used his ability to teleport to leave the room. Back with Naruto. Don't worry Koishi. I'm sure nobody saw that. Kayubi reassured her lover causing everyone to look at her skeptically. Now that you were able to form an Amari without entering full beast form, what are you going to be training next? Kashina asked as she took a slight break from her sword katas. My demonic power's special ability has yet to manifest itself so I can't train that yet, Naruto scowled slightly. My force powers that I currently possess have been honed to near perfection. Don't worry yourself too much Koishi, I'm sure that you will find something to train in, Kayubi said before she stiffened up slightly. Something wrong Q-chan? Naruto asked the demoness. I sense a presence that I have not sensed in a long time, Nibi-chan. Kayubi exclaimed suddenly. Nibi-chan? As in the Nibi no Bakaneko that had been sealed up by Kumogakir no Sado, hidden cloud village, Naruto asked in surprise. Yes, there's no doubt about it. This is Nibi-chan's signature but that means her Jinchuriki is heading directly towards us, which I bet is no coincidence. Kayubi replied. Everyone please head back into the house, I will greet our visitor and see if he, she has any ill intentions towards us. Naruto's voice had taken that edge that said he was dead serious, everyone filed into the house as Naruto changed into his Darth Revan armor. With Yugito. Where the hell did that stupid purple beam come from? Yugito thought in frustration as she searched for some sign of life. Keep your calm kitten, look I see a clearing ahead of us. Nibi soothed her Jinchuriki. Yugito emerged from the forest and into the clearing to find the armored figure of Darth Revan glaring at least she thought it was glaring at her with crossed arms. Jinchuriki of the Nibi no Bakaneko, Naruto greeted politely. How do you know of my tenant? Yugito asked suspiciously. You'd be surprised at what I know, Naruto smirked under his helmet. Ooh, ooh. Ask him if he knows your cup size, Nibi suggested with a perverted chuckle. Nibi. Yugito shouted inwardly. So what can I do for you miss? Naruto trailed off waiting for her to give her name. And here I thought you would know my name, Yugito smirked. Unfortunately your name escapes me as I am too captivated by your beauty. Naruto replied smoothly causing Yugito to blush slightly. 
Damn he's good, I wonder if he looks as good as he talks. Nibi commented from her seal. Um, I'm Ni Yugito, a chunin from Kumogakure. I'm here on behalf of Kumo's council, faggots, and they wish to extend an invitation to join Kumogakure's forces. Yugito whispered the part about the council under her breath but Naruto still caught it. So Yugito-chan. Why does Kumo want little old me to join up with them? Naruto asked and watch with amusement as a light blush colored her face again at the suffix. The council got their hands on a Kirigakure bingo book and read about your achievements so they sent me to offer you a place in Kumo since you are currently unaffiliated with any of the hidden villages. Yugito answered. Hum. So basically they sent you to seduce me or sleep with me to get me to join Kumo. Naruto growled mentally as Yugito flinched slightly. Hit the nail on the head didn't I? Ha. All I have to do is beat the crap out of you and drag you back to Kumo. Yugito announced with false confidence and settled into a fighting stance causing Naruto to sigh. What makes you think you can take me on little kitten? Naruto grinned as he saw Yugito rise to the bait. Who's a little kitten? Yugito roared as she charged straight at Naruto and sent a spinning kick at his midsection, which was blocked by a forearm. Yugito withdrew her leg and sent a flurry of punches at Naruto, who either blocked or cleanly evaded every attack sent his way. Yugito jumped backwards and let loose a hail of kanai, only to blink in shock at them just freezing in midair a few centimeters away from their target. That's all you got kitty cat? Naruto released his telekinesis hold on the kanai, allowing them to fall to the ground. Careful kitten, we don't know what else that keke Jenke of his can do. Nibi cautioned and Yugito sent a mental nod of acknowledgement. Yugito gripped a kanai in her right hand and dashed at Naruto. She fainted a horizontal slash before reversing her grip on the kanai and flung it straight towards his head. Naruto had moved his body back slightly to dodge the fake slash and quickly tilted his head back slightly as the kanai missed his helmet by a fraction. Yugito took the chance to crouch low on the ground and shot up quickly, slamming her right shoulder directly into his stomach. Not bad Yugito-chan but you have to do better to really challenge me. Naruto coughed as he stumbled back slightly from the blow. Yugito had already begun running through hand seals for a technique and breathed in deeply. Kaden. Gokaku no Jutsu, Fire Release, Grand Fireball Technique. Yugito exhaled a larger than average sized fireball from her mouth. Naruto merely held up an open palm and the fireball impacted against an invisible barrier and exploded. Yugito fumed slightly at seeing her attack so easily countered and formed three quick hand seals. Raiden. Raibusha no Jutsu. Lightning release, lightning clone technique. Yugito created three lightning clones of herself and had them charge Naruto. They rushed him in a combination of different taijutsu moves. Naruto dodged a right hook before immediately leaping over a leg sweep and blocking catching a rising uppercut. He didn't notice Yugito forming more hand seals. Raiden. Rariuda no jutsu, lightning release, lightning dragon projectile technique. Electricity started forming a dragon around Yugito before it shot forward with a roar and tore straight into the ground that Naruto and the clones had been occupying. She watched as the dirt kicked up from the attack started to clear and blinked when all that was left was a crater in the ground. Good thing all you were fighting was a clone or that would have hurt. A voice said behind her causing Yugito to snap her head around and saw the figure of Darth Revan standing on a tree branch behind her. You mean that what I've been fighting all along has been a clone? Yugito asked in disbelief. Yes pretty much, I just wanted to see what you were capable of. Naruto shrugged as he force leapt of the branch and back into the middle of the clearing and beckoned for her to attack. Yugito formed three more lightning clones and sent them to attack as she ran through more hand seals, Naruto just force flung two clones into nearby trees and force pulled the third and punched it square in the face. However, he didn't realize that lightning clones caused a mild shock upon dispelling and was jolted. Kaden. Tora no Sume, Fire Release, Tiger's Claws. Yugito smirked as both her hands erupted into flames that slowly formed a pair of flaming tiger claws. Yugito dashed towards Naruto using chakra enhanced speed and sent a flaming claw slash right across his helmet. He recovered in time to stumble back a few steps. Yugito kept up her assault and slashed relentlessly at him with her flaming claws. Naruto had to use his force sense to keep up with the speed of her attacks. 
Naruto used the force to trip her and drove a force-enhanced knee into her stomach that knocked the breath out of her and followed up by force blasting her back across the clearing. Yugito pushed herself back up and coughed up some blood, she stood up shakily and braced herself against a tree trunk. Kitten are you alright? Nibi asked in worry. I'll be fine, just give me a one-tailed cloak. Yugito replied and instantly felt power course through her body as Nibi's Yuki started to envelop her body in a red bubbling shroud that extended into a single cat-like tail behind her. She has full control of her Jinshuriki cloak that means that she is on good terms with the Nibi. Naruto thought as Yugito leapt back onto a tree branch and took a deep breath. Bakaneko Enden. Monster Cat Flame Bullet. Yugito shot out a huge, blue flaming fireball from her mouth causing Naruto to force dash to the side. The ground erupted in a blaze of blue fire that lingered on the spot even after the fireball itself had dispersed long ago. Note to self. Do not get hit by that. Naruto mumbled before having to dodge yet another blue fireball that came flying his way, he force pushed Yugito into a tree as he dashed towards her. Yugito groaned as she stood back up, she quickly leaned back slightly to avoid an uppercut but was hit by force enhanced palm strike that followed. Yugito skid across the clearing before righting herself and dashing back at Naruto, trying to hit him with Yuki enhanced blows. Stay still so I can hit you. Yugito growled as Naruto just kept dodging or slapping aside her attacks as if he could sense them coming, she sent another Bakaneko Enden at him during her assault but he just destroyed it. Naruto caught a left hook with his right hand before sending a slight amount of force lightning through Yugito's body, she screamed as the purple lightning ran through her entire system. I'm from Kumogakure and even I haven't seen lightning like this before, black lightning sure but never purple, Yugito thought as she felt the feeling returning to her nerves already. Yugito pretended to stumble forward before suddenly shooting straight up, her head connecting with Naruto's chin and knocked him back. Yugito took the chance to initiate another attack that Nibi had taught her to use while in her Jinchuriki form. Anipou. Sokatsui, Demon Art, Blue Fire, Crash Down. Blue flames gathered into Yugito's open palm before shooting towards Naruto in a blazing blue wave of flames, Naruto concentrated and leapt as high as possible with a force enhanced jump but his eyes widened as he saw the Nibi Jinchuriki aim two palms at him. Anipou. Soren Sokatsui, Demon Art, Twin Lotus Blue Fire, Crash Down. Yugito roared as two beams of blue fire shot out of her palms and raced towards Naruto, who had begun to gather force energy into both palms. Suin Chikara Taihao. Twin Force Cannons. Naruto shot two beams of concentrated force energy out of his fists, the two attacks clashed against each other and exploded. When the smoke from the explosion cleared, Naruto's eyes widened at the sight of a two-story blue flaming cat with two tails swishing behind it. Um good kitty. Naruto said before having to dodge multiple blasts of blue flames that came flying at him, he quickly used the force to stop the descending flaming paw from crushing him. Naruto force pushed the paw away before using the force to grab a fallen tree trunk and smashed it right across the giant cat's head causing it to smash into another tree. Yugito growled as she got back up onto her paws and opened her mouth as black positive energy and white negative energy gathered into a ball. Naruto cursed colorfully when he saw this and immediately created a shadow clone as he began doing the same except over his open palm. While Yugito was shocked that her opponent was able to use Yuki. That didn't stop her from continuing her attack as blue flames merged with the ball. Yugito swallowed the blue flaming ball as Naruto just finished forming his Amari. Moru Nibiko Amari, Blazing Two Tailed Menacing Ball. Yanbiko Amari, Four Tailed Menacing Ball. Both of them roared with a demonic tone at the same time as a blue flaming beam of Yuki connected with a significantly larger beam of purple Yuki. The two attacks struggled for dominance before Naruto's one and blasted through Yugito's attack and struck the transformed Jinshuriki. The attack was still strong enough to knock her out despite being weakened by clashing with the other Amari beforehand. Naruto was panting slightly as he strode over to Yugito's passed out form and picked her up, he draped her over his shoulder and walked back into the house. Seems like Nibi-chan's Jinshuriki gave you a pretty good fight, he heard Kayubi say as soon as he entered the house. Hey you knew all along that I was playing with her just to see how well she has been taught. Naruto snorted in reply as he placed the knocked out Yugito on the couch. Of course I did, at least you got to field test your Amari, Kayubi stated. 
I have to get more control over it since I didn't mean to knock her out. The power output was too high. Naruto took off his helmet and Kayubi saw that he was frowning slightly. Don't worry about it too much too san. I'm sure you will get better with practice. Sai said with Kashina and Kayubi agreeing with him. I guess so. Now let's wake up Miss Yugito shall we? Naruto pressed a hand to the female blonde Jinchuriki's forehead and channeled some of his force energy into her. Ah! Uh, what hit me? Yugito groaned as she returned to the land of the conscious. That would be me. A rather familiar voice said with an amused tone. Yugito turned to face the voice and couldn't help but blush at the handsome and feral looking male in front of her. Oh I can already imagine what his body looks like underneath all that armor. Nibi purred causing Yugito's blush to darken considerably, that is until she remembered what he had just said. Wait a minute, you're Darth Revan? Yugito asked. I would like to say the one and only but I just inherited the name from my previous master. Naruto chuckled. Why did you go easy on me and then spare my life? I know from the little information we have on you that you could have easily destroyed me. Yugito said as she sat upright. I admit that I could but I didn't, as to why. Naruto smiled as he pointed at her stomach. I know how it feels like to be ostracized because of something that is beyond your control. You you're a Jinchuriki as well? Yugito gasped in surprise. Well, more along the terms of ex Jinchuriki. Naruto replied causing Yugito to look at him in disbelief. I assure you that I am not joking. Ex Jinchuriki. That means you had a biju inside you, so which one was it? Yugito asked with a curious expression since she hadn't met any other Jinchuriki other than Karabi before. 9. Naruto smirked as her curious expression morphed into one of shock. You were, were the Jinchuriki of the Kayubi no Yoko, the strongest biju? Yugito exclaimed. Yet again I wish I could say the one and only but alas I am not. Naruto replied with his smirk still in place. B but if you're no longer a Jinchuriki then that means, Yugito paled as she realized just what that meant. If you meant that the Kayubi no Yoko is free from my seal then yes. Naruto I smiled at her. Q Chan was released from her seal. Ask him how it was possible. Nibi demanded, her attitude serious for once. How was it possible for you to release the Kayubi from her seal? Yugito relayed her tenant's question. How you say? Well, Naruto trailed off as he glanced at the rest of his family. All of them merely shrugged as if to say go ahead. I merely found a loophole on the seal placed on me. Loophole. Yugito echoed in confusion. Yes, but if you were looking for a way to free yourself Nibi-chan, my method won't work since my seal is different than the one holding you. Naruto addressed Yugito's tenant directly. Handsome, powerful and smart, remind why you're not stripping naked and then riding him until. Nibi. Yugito roared inwardly as a slight blush returned to her face causing Kayubi, who was watching the exchange, to snicker. I see Nibi-chan is still as horny as always a eh, Yugito. Kayubi commented causing Yugito to wonder who this person was. K-Y-U-U-Chan. Nibi exclaimed loudly causing Yugito's eyes to almost pop out of their sockets. You're Kayubi. Yugito pointed at the redhead, who just giggled. I see Nibi-chan still remembers my human form. Then that means he was telling the truth and hey wait a minute. Yugito shouted suddenly as she realized something else. Yes what is it Yugito-chan? Naruto lifted an eyebrow at her sudden outburst causing her to flush slightly. If you no longer contain Kayubi inside you then how did you manage to form an Amari since only demons are Jinchurikis, whom are able to tap into their demon's power, can perform it? Yugito pointed out. Very perceptive Yugito Chan, but I believe you just answered your own question. Naruto replied in a vague manner, wanting to let the female Jinchuriki figure it out for herself. What do you mean I answered my own question? Yugito crossed her arms, which only served to accentuate her rather impressive bust, more causing Naruto to lose focus for a second. Let me give you a hint then you said only two kinds of people are able to perform an Amari. If I'm not a Jinchuriki anymore, Naruto grinned as he watched Yugito's jaw drop. Why you're a demon? Yugito stammered in shock, to which Naruto nodded. B but how? We encountered a problem during the seal breaking that required me to turn into a full demon by becoming Q Heim's mate. I agreed instantly since we were already lovers and well, here I am. 
Maruto shifted slowly into his Hanyu form, complete with a pair of silver wolf ears and ten silver furred tails swishing behind him. However in doing so caused his armor to automatically reseal itself into its storage seal, leaving him in a tight black tank top and black anbu pants. Kitten I swear I will find a way to bust out of this seal if you don't strip this instant and fuck him until you black out from pleasure. Nibi moaned as she fingered herself in Yugito's mindscape. Now if you'll excuse me I have to, um, fuck it, I'm just going to go masturbate. Yugito's blush at the moment could have rivaled that of one Hyuga Hanada, it certainly didn't help that she could hear Nibi's moans coming from the mental link they shared. Naruto started purring as he felt Kayubi and Kashina instantly teleport to his side and start petting and stroking his tails, Yugito bit her lower lip slightly to control herself. Go ahead Yugito-chan, I don't mind. Naruto said as one of his silver furred tails moved towards her and she grabbed it gently and started stroking it. Um Revan san no san please, it makes me feel old and please call me Naruto. Naruto cut her off. Um, Naruto-kun. Why do you trust me enough to tell me all these information? Yugito asked hesitantly. First off, I could easily kill you before you could try and escape, Naruto began causing Yugito to gulp slightly. Mainly because I trust that you, having known the feeling of being ostracized, would be able to keep my secrets to yourself. Yugito didn't know how to reply to that, this guy just knocked her out without breaking a sweat before taking her into his house and answering every single question she asked. Well Yugito chan what are you going to do now? Naruto withdrew his tail as he shifted back into his human form causing Kayubi and Kashina to pout. I guess I should be heading back to Kumo to report my mission as a failure, and get yelled at by the council before they send me on yet another seduction mission. Yugito spat harshly as she already knew that would be what happened causing Naruto to frown. If it's really that bad then why didn't you leave the village? Naruto asked. I don't know. I guess it's because of the few people there that actually care about my well-being," Yugito replied as she thought about Karabi, the Rakage, Darui and Karabi's genin team. If they really cared about your well-being, wouldn't seeing you live your life happily and without worry be their first priority? Naruto asked her. Well I guess it should, but where would I go? Yugito looked down sadly. You could always stay with us, Naruto offered causing Yugito to snap her head up sharply in shock. Kitten say yes, say yes, Nibi shouted in her mind. You would really allow me to stay here with you and your family? Yugito asked hesitantly but with a glimmer of hope in her eyes. Of course I would and they don't mind either, right guys? Everyone just shook their heads with a smile. Yugito could feel tears coming to her eyes at the prospect of finally getting away from the council and their attempts to turn her into a sexual slave. I I accept your offer Naruto-kun. Yugito suddenly found herself in an embrace courtesy of the wolf demon. She blushed at the feeling of being in his arms but returned the hug. Then it's settled, though you should go back and pack your stuff as well as say your goodbyes to the people you care about. Naruto told her as he pulled away from the hug. Arigato Naruto-kun. Yugito said before she vanished in a vortex of blue flames, which Naruto believed to be her version of the Shunshin. Another potential mate already Naru Koi? Kayubi put her arms around him from behind after Kashina and Sai had left to continue their training. That all depends Kyuhime. Naruto replied as he leaned back slightly into her embrace. Well if it's my permission you're seeking then I have no problem in you dating Yugito or Nibi-chan. Kayubi nuzzled her mate's neck, earning a growl of approval from the force using Wolf Demon. Thanks Kyuhime but it's up to Yugito as well and no matter what happens, you will always be my first love. Naruto whispered as he twisted around in her grip and kissed her softly on the lips. I know Koishi and you will always be mine as well, forever and ever. With Yugito a day later knock. 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 Come in. A gruff voice shouted as the door to the Reikage's office opened and Yugito strode in to see a sitting behind his desk signing his paperwork with one hand and lifting weights with another. A was a tall dark-skinned man with a large muscular build, slicked back white hair a few wrinkles, and a small mustache and beard. Ah Yugito-chan. What can I do for you? A asked with a fatherly smile as he looked up from his work to see the blonde Jinchuriki of the Nibi standing in front of his desk. Reikage-sama, I would like to turn in my headband and retire as a shinobi of Kumogakure. 
Yugito said in an unwavering voice causing A to drop his weight in shock. Yugito. Do you even know what you're saying? A was flabbergasted at the behavior of the girl he had come to see as his own daughter. Hi Reikage Sama. I'm sure you know all about the attempts by the council to make me into nothing but an obedient sex slave. Yugito's voice wavered slightly as she said it. A clenched his fists tightly at the mention of it. Of course I do. I try my best to countermand those orders but the council just keeps finding their way around them. A replied in a furious tone. My most recent mission required me to try and seduce the hero of Kirigakur, Darth Revan. Yugito stated causing it to take a sharp intake of breath. He too had read the most recent addition to Kirigakur's bingo book. How are you back here alive? He doesn't sound like the sort of person that can be won over by seduction and you definitely wouldn't be able to defeat him in terms of power. I exclaimed in surprise that his niece had met Darth Revan and was still here talking to him. That's because Revan San offered me a chance to live away from the constant fear of someone trying to rape me or send me on another seduction mission, he offered me the chance to live with him. Yugito replied, keeping her promise of not revealing Naruto's identity or secrets. What? How do you know you can even trust this guy? A had stood up and gripped Yugito's shoulders tightly. He had me defeated and knocked out. I was completely at his mercy but he let me live and offered me the chance to live with him. Yugito placed both her smaller hands against the Reikage's arms and slowly lowered them to his sides. I know you and Karabi try to look out for me as much as possible and I will miss you guys a lot but please. The hesitated but he knew deep down that he and his brother couldn't always be there to save her from the council and that she actually might live a happier life away from Kumo and its idiotic council. Alright. I concede to your request. Please hand in your Kumo headband and Chunin flak jacket, just promise me that you will write to us at least once a week. A ruffled her hair affectionately. Of course I will. Yugito said as she placed the items he mentioned onto his desk before she was brought into a bear hug by the man she considered a father. Stay safe Yugito chan A released her from his hold and watched with a sad smile as Yugito left his office before he pressed the intercom. Mabui. Please get me Darui. See and my brother along with his genin squad to my office this instant, I have something important to discuss with them. Time skip no jutsu, three years later, it has been three years since Yugito had moved in with Naruto and his family, Akatsuki has remained silent over the past three years and didn't approach Naruto even once. Everyone had been training hard ever since they found out about Akatsuki, Kashina and Kayubi were even stronger than before while Yugito and Sai had improved tremendously under Naruto's guidance. As for Naruto himself, let's find out by reading on Nei. Naruto made it a point to visit Mei at least one week every month, it wasn't much but he had promised her that they would see each other more once he abandoned Konoha. During one of those trips, Naruto had been introduced to Chojuro. The bespectacled swordsman wielded the Haramekure and reminded Naruto of the shy Hyuga girl from his class, he also seemed to emit killing intent whenever Naruto met with Mei. Naruto had started dating Yugito about a year after she had moved in, he found it amusing how the blonde-haired Jinchuriki interacted with her hormone-driven tenant. Naruto had found out that being the Nibi no Bakaneko's container would cause Yugito to be prone to periods of heat, basically making her feel the urge to fuck anything with a dick, not that he was complaining mind you. Naruto's relationship with Kashina was slightly awkward at first with Kashina still getting accustomed to the idea of being a friend rather than a mother to her biological son. Fortunately the atmosphere did not last, Kayubi had decided enough was enough by the end of the first year and locked both of them in a room until they sorted out their problems. The two Uzumakis had yet to start dating but Naruto understood that Kashina still needed time to get her head around the idea of dating her son and was willing to give her as much time as needed. What about our dear purple-haired swordswoman you ask? Well Azuki Yugo had finally come to terms with the fact that she had fallen in love with a now 12 year old boy, albeit a boy that could destroy a hidden village but a boy nonetheless. She had a few more encounters with the force using warrior, mostly in the form of him saving her ass on S ranked missions gone wrong yet he always disappeared before she could thank him or admit her feelings. As for Madara and Akatsuki, well don't let me ruin the story, just read on. Clang. Sparks flew from the contact point between the metal blades as they clashed against each other, their wielders trying to overpower the other. 
The taller figure broke of the contact to deliver a roundhouse kick that was blocked by the flat side of his opponent's blade but the attack didn't stop there as his sword descended towards the vulnerable neck of his opponent. The shorter figure shifted his blade and caught the attack a second before it decapitated him, he attempted a punch with his free hand but it was swatted away by his opponent's hand. The two combatants back flipped away from each other before landing several meters apart, they glared at each other panting slightly until the taller one's face broke out in a grin. The shorter one let out a small sigh of relief as they bowed to each other, he sheathed his blade before making his way over to the other figure. Your kenjutsu skills have improved, I would say you would be on par with an anbu right now, Sai. The taller figure ruffled the youth's black hair playfully causing Sai to blush in embarrassment. Anyo. It was nothing to San, everything was thanks to you and Ka San's extensive training. The now identified Naruto chuckled in amusement at his adoptive son's bashfulness, such a long way the black haired youth had come from his original socially retarded self. True, but you managed to survive our training, and that in itself is a feat to be proud of. Before Sai could respond, a crimson blur had tackled his father to the ground, causing the boy to sigh at the rather common happening in their household. The dust from the collision settled to reveal Kayubi happily nuzzling away at her lover's neck. Naruto just smiled as he pet her soft blood red hair that had been pulled up in a ponytail with a lone bang hanging over the right side of her face. Hey Kayubi Haim, Naruto whispered softly to the beautiful vixen situated on his lap. Hey yourself Naru Koi, Kayubi replied lovingly before capturing her mate's lips in a short but passionate kiss. Sai, who had been watching, made a gagging sound as he quickly turned away from the sight of his parents kissing in front of him. Kayubi giggled as she got off her mate and helped pull him to his feet, the couple walked over to their son and ushered him back into their house in the forest. They were in the training clearing. To San. Where are Kashina Ne Chan and Yugito Ne Chan? Sai asked curiously as they plopped down on the couches in the living room. Kashina Chan and Yugi Chan are at a nearby town to restock our shinobi supplies such as kanai, shuriken, exploding tags and ink for your techniques. Naruto told him as he embraced Kayubi, who had decided that his lap was more comfortable than the couch. Sai barely suppressed the twitch that threatened his eyebrow as he pondered if his parents even understood what the word, decency, meant. Remember that tomorrow is the genin examinations, which also marks the day that we drop our respective masks. Naruto informed his adopted son, who grinned in anticipation. Naruto had been attending the academy by sending a reinforced shadow clone every day, Apparently shadow clones made from Yuki were way tougher than their chakra counterparts. Sai had been attending himself as Naruto wanted him to get more experience in human interactions but he kept his grades marginal at best and also adopted a semi-emotionless attitude. Kayubi shifted herself so that her head rested in her lover's lap, since you were only dropping the mask and not revealing your identity yet, how do you plan on fighting without your force powers or demonic abilities? What to Y.O.? That's right. I haven't told you yet have I? Naruto snapped his fingers upon realization of something important. I'm going to be using my demonic limit, the demon's special ability, and cover it up by saying it is some kind of new bloodline or something. Oh okay. That sounds l wait a minute. Kayubi's facial expression went from cheerful to pouting within a second. You mean to tell me that you had discovered your demonic limit and didn't tell me? Well, I wanted it to be a surprise. Naruto gave a small laugh as he rubbed the back of his head sheepishly causing her pout to morph into a smirk. Kayubi leapt off his lap before spinning around and face him with her hands on her hips, all right Mr. Surprise, you are coming with me right this instant and you are going to show me your demonic limit. And if I say no? Naruto asked rhetorically with a feral grin spread across his whiskered cheeks, the look in his slitted eyes taunting her continuously with an unspoken challenge. Hum. I could always just torture the information out of you but, Kayubi paused as she sashayed up to a grinning Naruto and trailed a hand seductively down the side of his cheek. I'm sure I could find a much more, pleasurable method of obtaining said information, wouldn't you say so Naruto? Naruto grabbed her hand as it began to move down his chest and yanked her into his embrace, I say, bring it on Q-chan. As soon as the last syllable left his mouth, he was pushed back onto the sofa as Kayubi climbed on top and settled down in a position that had her straddling him. She used her arms to pin down both of his own before leaning forward so that her mouth was right beside his right ear. Luckily Sai had left them alone by this point. 
Do you think you can take me? Kayubi the queen of the bijus, tailed beasts, Kayubi whispered seductively directly into his ear, the feeling of her hot breath on his skin causing a stirring in his loins. Naruto smirked as he lifted his head slightly and replied in kind, Oh I definitely can without a doubt but the question is, can you handle me? Then take me my king, claim this vixen as your own. You have no idea how long I have waited for this moment. Asterisk, Kayubi practically moaned into his ear as she ground their hips together, eliciting a small groan of pleasure from the wolf demon under her. Gladly. Warning. Upcoming lemon scene, the couple appeared in their bedroom in a swirl of fire, their lips already upon one another in a searing kiss that threatened to put them both out of commission before the actual fun began. Naruto's hands weren't idle as he used them to trace each and every curve of his mate whilst Kayubi ran her hands over his solid muscled chest and abdomen. They broke apart long enough to strip themselves of their shirts, leaving Naruto naked from the waist up and Kayubi in a lacy, red bra. Naruto groaned into the kiss as he felt Kayubi stroke his erection through the fabric of his pants, not wanting to be outdone, he reached around her back and unclasped her bra. Kayubi let out a surprised gasp as a cold wind suddenly blew across her now exposed nipples causing them to harden significantly. Naruto grinned in satisfaction as he slowly kissed down her jawline to her neck, he settled at the juncture between her neck and shoulder and nibbled on the spot gently. Narutita. Kayubi gasped out in pleasure as he continued down towards her left breast, leaving a small hickey at the spot he had been nibbling on. Naruto paused for a moment as he took the time to appreciate his mate's well-endowed chest before lightly flicking his tongue across the tip of her left breast while his right hand traced the areola of her other breast. Kayubi let out a low gasping moan at the sudden amount of pleasure coming from her breasts, he took this as a good sign and carried on. Ah! Kayubi exclaimed in surprise and pleasure when Naruto suddenly started sucking on her left breast whilst gently biting down on her nipple with his fangs as his right hand kneaded the soft flesh of her other mound. Kayubi brought her hands around her mate's head and pushed him close to her bosom in an attempt to increase the pleasure, Naruto complied as he bit down and pinched both her nipples simultaneously. Naruto. Kayubi screamed as she felt her first orgasm of the day shoot through her entire body like a lightning technique. She clutched him closer as she rode out the waves of pleasure. When she had recovered sufficiently from her high, she noticed that Naruto had already used his unsheathed claw to do away with their last articles of clothing. Kayubi stared hungrily at his fully erected tool that stood up proudly at an impressive 10 inches, looks like having both Yuki and Force energy had other benefits as well. Naruto's amethyst eyes glowed and he growled lowly as he smelled the heavenly scent of the arousal dripping down his beautiful and sexy vixen's leg. He pushed her down on the bed before pouncing on top of her, both of their eyes reflecting the same emotions of love, lust and desire. Naruto gave her a bruising kiss on the lips before beginning to move down her body but was stopped by the clawed hand of his mate. What's the matter my mate? Naruto cocked his head in confusion from the action. No more waiting. I'm not in the mood for foreplay. I've been waiting three fucking years for this, we've had enough foreplay during those years so now, Kayubi growled as she reached down and grasped his still hardened member. You are going to take this giant cock of yours, and shove it into my tight little virgin pussy. I would love nothing better than that my queen. Naruto growled in return as he lined himself up with her moist entrance that had been soaked in her juices already. This will hurt a little so bear with me alright? Kayubi howled in both pain and pleasure as Naruto shoved almost his entire length into her waiting pussy, breaking her hymen in the process which caused a bolt of pain to shoot through her. He paused to give her some time to adjust to the length and girth of his member, he leaned towards her face and lapped up the salty tears that squeezed past her closed eyes. Naruto groaned in frustration and pleasure, as he felt the heat emanating from her sex and the smooth velvety walls caress every inch of his cock. Am I'm fine Koishi? You can start moving now. Kayubi said after a minute or so, Naruto complied as he drew himself back out before plunging all the way in again. Both demons letting out low growls of pleasure, Naruto from the feeling of her walls sucking him in and Kayubi from the feeling of fullness within her. Naruto had started off with a slow pace but Kayubi was having none of that, fuck me Naru kun. Faster. Harder. You asked for it. Naruto picked up the pace as he started to hammer in and out of the red-haired female below him in a missionary position. Naruto had braced himself by placing both arms on either side of her head as he plowed in and out of her tight snatch, 
Kayubi panted and moaned as she gripped the bed sheets tightly in her hand. Yes fuck me. Stain my womb white with your essence my king. Kayubi howled out as she felt the pressure within her building up to her boiling point and by the sounds of her mates grunting, he was close to finishing as well. Ah. I'm close Q-chan. Naruto grunted out as he started to feel the pleasure gathering up in his loins, the strain was almost too much to bear but he wanted to make his mate finish first. Finally one of his thrusts managed to hit against her special spot, sending a blast of pure pleasure shooting through the fox demoness. I'm coming. Kayubi screamed out her release as her walls clamped down on his dick and her warm juices splashed out against his balls, the feeling was too much for Naruto to handle. Kayubi. Naruto roared out as the pressure that had been stored up in his groin area suddenly uncoiled. Kayubi moaned as she felt the warm, sticky substance flow into her waiting womb. Naruto gasped as the feeling finally subsided and he pulled out before plopping down beside his mate on the bed. Lemon over. Naruto kun. Kayubi rolled over slightly to look at her mate. Yes, Q Chan. I love you. Naruto gave her a warm smile, I love you too. Kayubi returned the smile before sighing in contentment, want to go again? Lunchtime at the Uchiha household, thanks for the lunch, I'm going to the training grounds to practice. Uchiha Sasuke, the golden boy of Konohagakure, grunted as he left the house and slammed the door behind him. Uchiha Makoto let out a soft sigh of sadness as she finished washing the last of the dishes and slumped onto a couch in the living room, she didn't notice the figure creeping in through her window until a familiar voice spoke up. Such a depressing sigh should not come from a lady as beautiful as yourself Miko-chan. Makoto leapt off the couch in shock when she heard the voice and spun around to find the amused visage of her demonic lover, Naru-kun. I didn't sense you coming in. I just climbed in through the window. What would have happened if I had been an assassin? Hum. Naruto questioned the Uchiha matriarch, who could only look down at the floor in embarrassment and shame. Naruto sighed as he strode over to his raven-haired goddess and brought her into a hug, mind telling me what has gotten you so down. I it's Sasuke, no matter how hard I try to get him back to the cheerful and energetic boy he once was, all my efforts keep getting wasted by the bloody civilian council. All their praise and sucking up has gone to his head, turning my baby boy into, into that cold, unfeeling child that doesn't even have time for his own mother anymore. Makoto replied as she pressed her head against his chest, tears slowly trickling out of the corner of her eyes. There, there Mikoheim. Let it all out, I'm here for you, Naruto whispered soothingly into her ear as he gently rubbed comforting circles on her back, waiting for her to regain her composure. Do you want to know what is my honest opinion on this matter? Makoto sniffed as she used her palm to wipe away the remaining tears on her face, what do you mean by that? What I meant was, would you like to hear my honest opinion on the best course of action to take regarding Sasuke? Naruto clarified as he pulled Makoto down onto the couch beside him. Of course I would, you know that I love you and I trust your opinion. Alright, remember when I told you about the, Naruto paused as he released a small pulse of force throughout the area to sense for any eavesdroppers, not sensing any he continued. Plan involving us leaving Konohagakure no Sato? Yes, Makoto said slowly, not sure where the conversation was heading. When we, leave, Konoha, I think it best that we leave Sasuke behind. Naruto stated plain and simply causing Makoto's eyes to widen considerably but he raised a hand to forestall any argument that may leave the raven-haired woman's mouth. Listen to my reasoning first Makoto. Makoto knew he was serious when he didn't attach his usual suffixes to the end of her name, biting her lip slightly before she gave him a small nod to explain. Ever since the massacre, Sasuke's train of thoughts had become progressively darker with each day. It is obvious that Itachi must have done something to him that affected his psyche pretty badly, my personal guess would be some kind of high-level genjutsu. I had a cage Bushin keep an eye on him in case Itachi chose to return and finish the job, it observed that Sasuke has become more and more obsessed with the thought of revenge and hatred with every passing day. Naruto sighed inwardly as he saw the impact his words were having on his lover. That's not the only problem, as you said, the civilian council also plays its role. Their attempts at sucking up and praising him for every small detail has allowed all the fame and attention to go to his head thus granting him an ego as large as the entire elemental nations. He also believes that anyone who is not an Uchiha is automatically weaker than him and must follow his orders, 
the civilians and his large fangirl group has contributed to this. B. But what could have caused him to have this superiority complex? My guess would be that despite Itachi's betrayal, part of Sasuke noted that Itachi had managed to wipe out the entire clan by himself. So he must have believed that the moment he activates his Sharingan, he would be just as strong as Itachi and able to take on anyone by himself. This leads us to another problem of him not being able to work in groups, which my clone at the academy has confirmed. Sasuke prefers to work alone because he believes that the people on his team would just be dead weight and slow him down, he'd rather sacrifice his teammates to get a hit in than save them. Makoto had her face in her hands halfway through the explanation and was sobbing softly to herself. Why? Why did this have to happen to my baby boy? Naruto felt his heart clench at the sight of his love in so much emotional turmoil, he silently pulled her onto his lap and embraced her as if trying to reassure her that no matter what, he would still be there for her. He racked his brain trying to find a solution for the problem at hand when it suddenly hit him like a rolling Akamichi. Miko Haim. Sasuke doesn't have to be your only son. Naruto whispered into her ear, pricking her curiosity slightly. After we have left, we could always have one, you know, once everything has settled? Makoto gasped as she got up and spun around to face him with tears in her eyes, really? You mean it Naru-kun? Of course I mean it silly, once everything has settled down. We can have one, two or three, as many as you want. Naruto chuckled as Makoto glommed him in happiness. Hokage Tower Serutobi Hiruzen sighed before blowing a small puff of smoke out from his pipe as he gazed upon the stacks of paperwork that had converged on his desk. Some days he would wonder if Minato died just so he could escape from this nightmare. Spinning around in his chair, Hiruzen looked out of the window of his office as he submerged himself in his own thoughts. Darth Revan, it's been three years since the ruckus that you had caused, which resulted in the death of Danzo. What are you up to now? He pondered about the mysterious armored figure that had so easily steamrolled over their entire shinobi force as if they were nothing more than little children. And what exactly are your plans with Uzumaki Kashina? Upon thinking of the red-haired Kunoichi's name, his thoughts shifted direction and landed on that of her son, Uzumaki Naruto, the Jinchuriki of the dreaded Kayubi no Yoko. Turning back to his desk, he opened up the bottom drawer and pulled out two separate folders. He opened the first one and slid out several pieces of paper, the academy grades and feedback of the blonde Jinchuriki. Let's see, it says here, Ninjutsu, Kawarimi no Jutsu, Pass, Henge no Jutsu, Pass and Bushin no Jutsu, Fail. Genjutsu. Unable to dispel or perform the simplest techniques. Taijutsu. Pass but no true form, uses more of a brawler stance and relies on his huge stamina to keep going. Written grades. Fail. Hiruzen sighed in frustration at the poor results the boy was showing. What would the other villages say when they saw what kind of Jinchuriki Konoha had produced? He massaged his temples before continuing with the report. Uzumaki Naruto shows no interest in paying attention during lessons and is in general a troublemaker, he gets into fights with Uchiha Sasuke and Inazuka Kiba frequently. In spars, he only wins due to the fact that he has way more stamina than anyone in the class. Skips lessons often to go into the village and play pranks but I always manage to track him down and drag him back into class. Report submitted by Amino Uruka. The aged Hokage slipped the papers back into their folder before opening the second one, this time it was a report from his Anbu that he had ordered to keep an eye on Naruto. Uzumaki skipped lessons again as usual, he pranked several stores that had refused to sell their goods to him in the past. Amino had once again captured him and dragged him back to the academy. Uzumaki pesters councilwoman Haruno's daughter for another date, only to get punched by her. Uzumaki falls asleep during lesson and awakes when Amino shouted at him. After lessons, Uzumaki was seen sitting by himself on a swing while the other children were picked up by their parents. Uzumaki then was treated to lunch at Ichiraku's ramen by Amino. Uzumaki returned home to his apartment block and spent the remainder of the day inside. Report by Anbu Operative Kuma, Bear. It's things like this that make me wonder why I didn't just let Danzo train him. Here is inside as he placed both folders back into the bottom drawer and shut it. Just as he was about to start his paperwork, the rhythmic pounding of legs running down the hallway filled his office before the door slammed open followed by a young voice shouting out. All right old man, today is the day that I get that hat from you. Hiruzen felt a tick starting to develop in his eyebrow as he thought to himself, 
Waimi. Akatsuki Hideout Uchiha Madara sat cross-legged in the middle of a dark room meditating without his mask on, his breathing was shallow and calm like the rain that fell outside of the window. The sound of a door opening snapped him out of his deep trance, snapping open a single Sharingan eye that he directed to the door. He could make out the vague outline of a spiky-haired male with most of his body covered in shadows standing in the doorway, the ripple-patterned grayish-purple eyes the only thing that was clearly visible. What do you want Nagato? I thought I told you that I was not to be disturbed when I am meditating. Madara demanded of the Rinnegan wielder. Kakuzu and Hidan have successfully returned with the Jinchiriki of the Nanabi no Kabutomushi and the rest of the members are ready to begin the extraction process. Nagato replied with a tone of slight disdain in his voice. Madara chose to ignore it as he closed his eye once again, very well, you may begin the extraction. Nagato gave a small nod as he left whilst shutting the door behind him, leaving the founder of the Uchiha clan sitting by himself in the dark once again. Darth Revan, who exactly are you that you have been able to defeat the Sanbi no Kyodai game as well as figure out that I was the true leader behind Akatsuki? Madara pondered as he settled into another meditative state. I guess all answers will reveal themselves in time, with this first step completed, my plan is finally being put into motion. Following morning, all right Sai, you ready to blow their minds? Naruto asked his adoptive son and student. The correct question is, are they ready for us? Sai smirked in response. He he he, now that's a good answer. Naruto chuckled as he ruffled his adoptive son's hair, earning him a mock growl of annoyance from him. Naruto was wearing a black muscle shirt with a gray jacket over it, he also had on a pair of gray ambu styled pants with his projectile holster taped to his right thigh. On the back of his jacket was the kanji for, wind, printed in black ink, on his hands were a pair of black fingerless gloves with a steel plate over each knuckle. He controlled his image to portray himself at around 5 feet 6, with his hair hanging over his fringe slightly and his original cerulean iris back in place. Sai was wearing a black t-shirt with the kanji for paint written on the front, underneath that he wore a plain mesh shirt that reached up to his elbows. He had on a pair of black anbu styled pants with his projectile holster taped to his left thigh and his painting equipment on his right. On his back was a sheathed tonto, his skin wasn't as pale as when Naruto had first found him and his hair now fell over the left side of his face slightly. Naruto had gotten Sai into the academy by telling the Hokage that he was an orphan that had been left out on the streets and wanted to become a ninja, of course the thing that sealed the deal was Sai's unique brand of paint ninjutsu. Thus Naruto introduced him as Gaka, painter, Sai. Naruto and Sai approached the ninja academy and made their way towards their classroom, Naruto gained a feral grin upon reaching the door that separated them from their class. In Aruka's class the class was bustling with noise as eager chatter about the genin exams filled the air, all the while Aruka watched with an ever-growing tick mark on his head that only Shikamaru seemed to notice. Troublesome. The Nara clan heir thought to himself as he plugged his ears with his fingers, preparing for what was to come. Shut up and sit down you brats. Aruka shouted while utilizing the dreaded Onigashira no Jutsu, demon head technique, resulting in the class quickly scrambling for their seats and keeping quiet. Good, now I can start with the attendance, Abarame. Bam. The rest of the name was cut off when the door was brutally kicked off its hinges and sent sailing into the classroom. It then collided with the enlarged forehead of one Haruno Sakura. All eyes, except Sakura, turned towards the doorway in shock as two figures strode in, the first one with a self satisfied smirk on his whiskered face and the other snickering. Of course, the whisker marks were a dead giveaway to the first person's identity. Naruto? Is that you? The entire class shouted in surprise upon witnessing the blonde's transformation orange jumpsuit wearing freak to stylishly dressed hunk. Several of Sasuke's fangirls had switched targets upon this sight and one Hyuga Hanada had fainted with a fountain of blood spraying out of her nose, prompting the student next to her to move his table slightly further away. No it's the fucking Easter Bunny. Of course it's me, who else has these markings? Naruto replied sarcastically as he gestured at his whisker-like scars on his cheeks. Iruka blinked a few times before finally coming to his senses, okay Naruto and Sai, looks like you got here on time just go and pick somewhere to sit. Naruto had chosen to sit beside Shikamaru at the back of the class while Sai sat in the free space beside Ino, who were taking discreet glances between Sasuke and Sai. Hey Shika. 
Naruto greeted the shadow user in a cheerful tone causing him to lift his head from the table and turn to face Naruto. Hey Naruto. What's with the new look? Shikamaru asked with a confused expression. Naruto shrugged and replied cryptically, a new beginning deserves a new look. Troublesome blonde, Shikamaru grumbled as he placed his head back on his desk and fell asleep. Naruto kicked back and placed his legs onto the desk as he surveyed his fellow classmates, automatically picking which of them would pass and which of them would fail. Once Aruka had finally finished taking down everyone's attendance, Mizuki entered the room holding a stack of papers that were without a doubt their written tests. Naruto rolled his eyes discreetly when he felt Mizuki perform a small genjutsu on his test paper before handing it to him with a scowl. The pathetic illusion was shattered with a small burst of Yuki. What's the name of the Shodem Hokage? What's the name of the Shodem Hokage's Keke Jenke? What are the names of the Sanin? What jutsu was the Yandaimi Hokage famous for? What the fuck? How does any of this prepare us for the real world? I won't be surprised if half of the class ends up dead on their first C rank, Naruto thought with a slight twitch in his eyebrow but wrote down the answers on the paper anyway. After five minutes, Naruto put down his pencil and placed his head down on the table. Both Shikamaru and Sai had finished their respective tests around the same time as Naruto, Iruka and Mizuki were flabbergasted at Naruto's performance. Another 30 minutes later and Mizuki came around to collect the papers, he sneered at Naruto as he snatched his test paper from the table but he accidentally dropped it onto the ground. Naruto narrowed his eyes at the silver-haired Chunin instructor before letting a small smirk grace his face as he subtly used his force powers to levitate the piece of paper and slipped it into the stack in Mizuki's hand. All right class it's time for the taijutsu portion of the exam, please proceed to the training ground in an orderly manner. Aruka shouted over the chatter that had risen after the tests had all been collected. Naruto stood beside Sai as the class gathered outside the boundary of the sparring arena, Aruka and Mizuki stood in the middle of the ring as they waited for the students to settle down. For this portion of the exam, you will have to either land a hit on Mizuki or last for a total of 5 minutes. No jutsus are allowed, does everybody understand the terms? Aruka's gaze swept over the class and gave Mizuki a nod to proceed when nobody raised their hand. First up, Abarame Shino. The rest of the class watched as the Abarame heir entered the arena and adopted the basic academy taijutsu stance, Aruka blew the whistle and they were off. Naruto watched the matches with an air of boredom surrounding him, he felt a slight annoyance build up within him at the subtle glances that the Hyuga heir was throwing at him. He had learnt from the memories of his clones that the girl had a terrible shyness condition as well as a total lack of confidence, normally he would have taken pity on the girl but her actions really got on his nerves. Instead of using him as a source of inspiration, the girl used all her spare time that could be used for training to stalk him around instead. The first few times were amusing but after a month or so of her doing the same thing, Naruto almost felt like going to the Hokage to request a restraining order. Plus the fact that she possessed the famous Byakugan of the Hyuga clan, which allowed the user to see through solid objects, totally put him on edge. Naruto snapped out from his thoughts when he heard Aruka call out Sai's name, he watched as Sai strode into the arena and stood opposite Mizuki in a loose combat stance. Naruto remembered that Sai had created this style himself a year back, it revolved around fast and fluid strikes that didn't give the enemy a chance to attack. He had named the style, the, flowing ink style. Go. Aruka blew the whistle as Sai quickly blocked a slow punch from the silver-haired Chunin but he didn't throw a counter-attack, which caused Naruto to raise an eyebrow in surprise. He watched as Sai blocked or evaded Mizuki's attacks with a graceful ease, he finally landed a punch at exactly one minute on the clock. Why did you hold back? I know you could have landed that counter hit after the first punch, Naruto whispered to Sai as he walked back beside him. Hmm. I just didn't feel like showing up the Uchiha before he even got the chance to go and I got the feeling that you wanted to be the one to do that. Sai replied cheekily causing a smirk to cross his adoptive father's face. You know me so well, the duo watched as the rest of the students went into the arena one by one, with Aruka and Mizuki switching every five rounds so as to keep it fair. Finally it was coming to an end when they saw Aruka exit the arena and Mizuki replaced him, down to the final three. Uchiha Sasuke. Aruka called out, the raven-haired kid strode into the arena amidst the cheering of his rabid fangirls with an air of superiority around him and an arrogant smirk on his face. 
Naruto recognized the stance as the Uchiha's taijutsu style. The interceptor fist, begin. Naruto growled lowly in the back of his throat when he saw more favoritism towards the so-called, last Uchiha. It was obvious to his keen eyesight that Mizuki was purposely going easy on the brat. Allowing him to land a punch on him within 30 seconds, the fangirls went wild with the loudest being a pink-haired banshee, I meant Haruno Sakura. Sasuke purposely walked towards the blonde-haired Jinshiriki and whispered in a high and mighty tone as he passed him, beat that, Dobi. Watch me. Teme, bastard. Naruto hissed lowly in reply as Aruka called his name, he almost laughed at Mizuki's attempt to scare him with his pathetic amount of killing intent, Ki. Alright, begin. Naruto yawned as Mizuki rushed towards him and threw a quick right hook that was meant to connect with his jaw, unfortunately it didn't go as planned. Naruto ducked under the punch and delivered a force enhance uppercut directly into Mizuki's jaw, which not only knocked out the chunin in one hit but also sent him sailing into the air. He watched in amusement as the body arced in the air before plummeting back down to the ground, he ignored the looks of shock and one of jealousy as he went back to his position. Iruka pushed his jaw back into position before dragging Mizuki out of the arena, would someone send Mizuki to the hospital, Miss Yamanaka please enter the arena. Once the taijutsu portion was done, the students were given a break of half an hour to catch their breath before they proceeded to the ninjutsu portion of the exams. Mizuki had returned during this half-hour break with his jaw bandaged up, he shot a glare at Naruto as he walked past the blonde. Naruto just gave him a fang-filled smirk that sent a shiver of fear up the chunin's spine. The students were placed in a waiting room as Aruka called on them one at a time to enter the examination room. Apparently all they had to perform was the standard henge, kawarimi and bushin jutsus. Yet once again the list was in alphabetical order, meaning that Naruto would be the second last with Ino being the last. He watched in amusement as Sai came out with his Konohagakure forehead protector, he signaled that he would be waiting for him at their usual spot at Ichiraku's ramen stand. Naruto was surprised when the pink-haired fangirl emerged with a forehead protector as well, he was sure she would have failed. Hinata walked out with it tied around her neck, tried to meet Naruto's gaze before letting out a small squeak and dashing away. Kiba started bragging and shouting just as Naruto had expected, Shikamaru just muttered about it being troublesome and slinked off to go watch clouds again. Sasuke's turn finally came around and he too emerged with a forehead protector, he walked out of the academy but not without throwing Naruto a victorious smirk first. Naruto covered his ears as Ino squealed directly into his sensitive ears, believing that the smirk had been meant for her instead. Uzumaki Naruto. Naruto entered the room and smirked upon seeing Mizuki nursing his broken jaw, he just couldn't resist throwing a jab at the obviously hostile instructor. I'm sorry Mizuki-sensei, I didn't think that such a weak punch would do that much damage. Mizuki just sent a sneer and a glare his way while Naruto was laughing hysterically inside his own mind, messing with these kind of people was just too easy. Okay Naruto. All you need to perform is the academy standard 3 jutsu. Okay. Let's see your henge no jutsu first. Aruka smiled in encouragement at the blonde, Naruto pondered for a moment before a devious idea came to mind. Henge no jutsu. Transformation technique. Naruto was engulfed in a pillar of smoke, Aruka's and Mizuki's eyes widened in fear at the figure that emerged from the smoke. Out of the smoke stepped a perfect replica of the armored figure of Darth Revan, fluttering cloak, glowing crimson visor and all. The two chunins gulped at the intimidating figure, what they didn't realize was that Naruto was releasing a small amount of killing intent as well. V very good Naruto, now P please transform back. Aruka marked down a perfect score for the jutsu as Naruto turned back with another puff of smoke, all the while hiding an ear-splitting grin that threatened to stretch across his face at their expressions. Next please swap with an object within this room. Aruka finished as he found himself standing where Naruto previously was, he turned his head to see Naruto sitting on his chair with his feet on the table and a grin on his face before switching back. Excellent. Substituting with a person isn't an easy feat. Even most chunins aren't able to perform it yet. Aruka marked down another perfect score for the Kawarimi no Jutsu. Now please create three bushins. Naruto paused and faced Aruka. Does it have to be three bushins or can I make more than that? There isn't a rule that says you are limited to three, the highest so far is Uchiha Sasuke with six bushins. Alright, 
Naruto cracked his knuckles and neck. Bushin no jutsu. Iruka's jaw dropped open. Mizuki's would have joined his but alas it was broken, at the sight of an entire room filled with Naruto illusions. I'd estimate there are about a hundred plus clones in there, wouldn't you say so Iruka sensei? Gee good job Naruto, please choose your forehead protector from the stack on that table. Iruka stammered as he marked down yet another perfect score with bonus points, Naruto grabbed a black clothed one and tied it around his left bicep. He left the room to meet up with Sai, all the while a small smirk on his face when he noticed Mizuki with a look of frustration on his face. At Ichiraku's ramen stand Sai was halfway through his first bowl of miso ramen when he felt the chakra presence of his father figure, mentor settle down beside him on another stool. Tuchi-san, one bowl of beef ramen. Naruto shouted out his order. Sure thing Naruto, one bowl of the finest beef ramen for our number one customer coming right up. Tuchi shouted back from the kitchen. So did everything go as planned? Sai asked. Yup, without me failing. Mizuki Teme has no choice but to steal the Forbidden Scroll himself and I will be waiting to follow him, a perfect chance to copy all the Kinjutsu that Konoha has created over the years. And best of all, all the blame would be placed on Mizuki Teme. Naruto chuckled evilly, stopping just as Ayame came out from the kitchen with his bowl of ramen. Order up Naru, ta, kun. Ayame almost dropped the bowl of ramen upon seeing the changed Naruto, something that he and Sai found highly amusing. Ayame-chan. Flies are going to enter your mouth if you keep it open like that for too long. Naruto teased the brunette waitress of the stand, who turned an interesting shade of red from the suffix. E enjoy your R ramen Naruto-kun. Ayame stuttered out with a blushing face before retreating back into the kitchen, earning a small chuckle from both of the male customers sitting at the stand. You sure you don't need any backup for tonight? Just in case anything unexpected occurs or something, Sai inquired as he finished up the last of his ramen. No need to worry, I've got this covered. Naruto declared confidently as he slurped up all his remaining broth and noodles before slamming the bowl back onto the countertop. Thank for the food Tuchi-san. I'm leaving the money on the counter. Sure thing Naruto, come back any time you wish. Later that night Mizuki panted as he landed in a deserted clearing in the middle of the forest surrounding Konohagakir no Sado, the forbidden scroll in his arms and two Fuma shuriken attached to his back. Damn I was lucky that the Sandame was busy knocked out from blood loss from reading that perverted book of his, who knew having a pervert as a Hokage would be beneficial in some way. Mizuki thought with a slight sweat drop as he recalled the image of the unconscious Hokage wearing a perverted grin on his face with a trail of blood leaking down his nose. He propped the rather large scroll up against the trunk of a tree as he took a short breather, a sudden rustle in the foliage to his right caused him to jump slightly and pulled out a kanai. Who's there? Mizuki demanded as he walked slowly towards the source of the sound, his kanai at the ready. Well, 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 what do we have here? A traitor it seems huh? A metallic voice resounded throughout the forest clearing, scaring Mizuki a little though not that he would admit it. Who are you? Show yourself coward. Mizuki shouted as he spun around wildly, trying to pinpoint the actual source of the voice. Oh a coward am I? Why would you say that my dear Mizuki? Isn't it natural for a shinobi to strike from the shadows, especially since I don't have to show myself to do this? As soon as the last word echoed through the clearing, Mizuki found himself soaring through the air before impacting painfully against a tree that had been several meters behind him. Before he could even recover, he was once again sent sailing through the air and slammed into another tree trunk several meters away causing several ribs to break. Gah! Mizuki coughed out blood as he pulled himself back up into a sitting position with his back against the tree and one of the Fuma shuriken now clutched in his hand. Oh my! Such a sharp object, you should put it away before something bad happens such as, this. Mizuki found his hand holding onto the large windmill-styled shuriken move without his consent, the arm lifted the large quadruple-bladed weapon up before stabbing one of its blades into his own thigh. Mizuki's scream tore through the forest as Naruto, decked out in his Darth Revan armor, snickered from his perch on a tree branch not too far away from the clearing. While Mizuki was busy being flung around the clearing, a cage bushin of Naruto had begun copying down the kinjutsu from the forbidden scroll to a blank scroll using a script copying technique. Naruto was still busy playing the role of a mad puppeteer with Mizuki as the puppet when his clone tapped him on the shoulder, 
Boss I've copied the entire scroll already, I returned the scroll to where Mizuki had left it. Good. Head back to our hideout and dispel once you have placed the scroll in my room. Naruto ordered his clone, which snapped off a quick salute before leaping off in the direction of their forest home. Mizuki was hacking up blood as he struggled to bring himself back to his feet, his body suffering from both internal and external injuries thanks to the unknown attacks. Blood streamed down from a particularly large gash above his left eye, he looked up as he heard footsteps approaching his position. He looked up only to gasp in fear at the glowing crimson visor staring down at him, it looked all the more sinister in the darkness of the forest. D. Darth R. Revan, Mizuki managed to choke out in fear despite the amount of blood welling up inside his throat. The imposing armored figure shifted one hand out from under the black cloak, revealing a familiar cylindrical object grasped in his gauntleted hand. Didn't your mother ever teach you that stealing was bad? Darth Reven's metallic voice asked tauntingly before chuckling slightly. Oh that's right, I forgot that you were a ninja, since you suck so badly it was kind of hard to tell. P please spare me, I'll tell you who I'm working for. Mizuki pleaded desperately as he tried to save his own hide earning a grunt of disgust from the Sith Lord. You don't even have loyalty to your master, people like you, are worse than trash. And, he trailed off as he ignited Shinku no Cage with a snap hiss, the intimidating crimson and black blade casting an ominous glow in the immediate area. I already know who you're working for. Fine then. Mizuki's right hand suddenly pulled forth a syringe filled with a sickly purple liquid and stabbed it into the area around his heart. Naruto took a step back in surprise at the sudden burst of foul-looking chakra that exploded from Mizuki's body, he watched in disgust as the body began to bulge and mutate. Fur started growing in patches all over his body, the transformation finished several seconds later. Behold the glorious power that Orochimaru-sama has bestowed upon me, ha ha ha. Mizuki shouted in glee, his new body resembling a muscle-bound tiger-human hybrid creature. That is wrong on so many different levels, Naruto deadpanned as he dodged a claw swipe from the now fully recovered Mizuki, whose attacks had gained both strength and speed thanks to his new form. Stop moving around so I can gut you! Mizuki roared in rage as he started slashing even faster and more furiously, eventually Naruto got tired of playing around with the deranged ex chunin I would love to stay and play with you some more but I have places to be and people to meet so, do me a favor and die. Naruto grasped Mizuki in a force choke but was genuinely surprised when he felt that it was harder to hold the transformed traitor, the surprise didn't last long. With a simple flick of his wrist, Shinku no Cage burned a clean hole right through Mizuki's head. Naruto summoned his lightsaber back to his hand with a force as he let Mizuki's dead body slump to the ground with a thud he then pointed his still-ignited lightsaber at a random tree. Iruka-san. Why don't you come out before I pull you out myself and trust me when I say my method won't turn out pretty? The figure of Amino Iruka dropped out of the tree and landed in a crouch, very observant Revan-san, I saw the entire fight from start to end. So I trust that you can take it from here? Naruto asked in the metallic tone of his second identity, earning a nod from the academy instructor. I'll be on my way then. Iruka watched in awe as the Sith Lord doused his lightsaber and clipped it to his belt before fading into the darkness around him, he turned his head and found the forbidden scroll propped up against a tree. At least the scroll is safe, Iruka thought in relief as he lifted the scroll onto his shoulder and turned around, only to pause upon seeing the hulking form of Mizuki in his cursed seal form. Now the question is how the fuck am I supposed to move him? Hokage's office the Sandame Hokage had witnessed the entire fight through his crystal ball and took a deliberate long puff of his pipe, he blew out a ring of smoke into the air. So you finally showed up again eh Darth Revan? To stop a traitor no less. You are indeed a mystery, a mystery that I will solve no matter how long it takes. I wasn't called, the professor, for nothing. Sarutobi Hirazan thought to himself just before his secretary wheeled in another huge stack of paperwork. After I finish with all these blasted paperwork, to be continued. I hope you enjoyed. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next part.